Good afternoon, um, Team Day Day, um, and welcome to another YouTube video. I know it's been a minute since I've done videos, but, um, yeah, welcome to another YouTube video. Um, it is almost Mother's Day weekend. Mother's Day weekend is fastly approaching. And it's also almost the two-year anniversary of me and YouTube. So, um, of course, I will be doing a YouTube video on um, Mother's Day. Um, just, you know, saluting our mothers and also celebrating two years of me doing YouTube. Um, doing the, uh, my first experience, my first year of experience of doing YouTube was okay. You know, you know, I remember when I started around this time, I didn't really have that many subscribers. But, you know, since then, the numbers have gone up. And I hope that they continue to go up. Um... I hope so. Um, as you all know, today is National um, Pray um, Prayer Day. I mean, yeah, National Prayer Day. I posted it on my Facebook and Instagram page, but it is National um, Pray for the Nation. Um, national, yeah, yeah, y'all know what I'm trying to say. So um, I encourage you all to pray. Um, for our nation, pray for the world, you know, let's just continue to keep United States of America under, uh, in prayer, you know, let's not be selfish, let's not, you know, think that we're better than anybody else, but let us just pray for one another, um, in this time of grief, let's just do that, and let's do that. Um, I do want to share a story with you all. Um, I'm just putting it on YouTube because I see a lot of people posting videos about this. So I'm sitting here like, well, might as well just go ahead and put mine out there. But, um, and this is basically what the video is. I'm announcing the two year anniversary in this video. I'm also announcing about, you know, the upcoming, you know, day which is mother's day and i'm also going to be talking about this that i'm going to be focusing on um so basically um a lot of people are uh, fortunate some are unfortunate some of them some people are unfortunate but some people are fortunate to be able and i hope i'm saying that word right because i'm not good at pronouncing words but you guys know what i'm trying to say um to see the afterlife, to visit heaven and to visit hell. You know, some people are, you know, fortunate to, you know, have out of body experiences where they get to visit heaven or hell. You know, sometimes, you know, while people are asleep, God will send Jesus to hand pick a certain person to visit a certain you know, a mountain night is in hell and a certain mountain night is in heaven. Um, I don't really think that if I was hand chosen, which probably um, will never happen, but even if I'm just using it as an example, if I was hand chosen by God for Jesus to take, you know, to bring back a message, I don't know if I could stand going down to hell because of the, tar the terrorists. I say this is because, you know, we have to... Start looking at things around us and even look at our life. You know, people think that we're going to be on earth forever. If you die, it's just fortunate. But we have to understand that we're not meant to be on planet earth forever. We're just passing by. We're just souls passing by. But you have to think as to, you know... How am I living? 
what is my destination going to be like? Am I'm destined? Am I'm living right to go to heaven, or I'm going to live? Or if I'm living where I want to live, I end up going to hell. You know, a lot of people look at shows like Family Guy, American Dad, um, examples like that, and people see hell as a cool place to go live. Um, I am a Christian. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe he rose and died. I believe that he died on the Calvary Cross. I accepted him as my Lord and Savior. I had got baptized um, in the month of August, you know, in um, 2015. Um, but I got baptized because I believe that he was. And, and like many people, when you're brought up into, you know, church, you don't think that Jesus Christ is real. You don't believe in him. But then it takes that one time to have an encounter with him to believe. And I was one of those people where I didn't believe in Jesus. I didn't think he was real. I thought he was a fake pagan god. I did. And, you know, I just thought he was a myth. And I remember, you know, reading the word of God. And as I read the word of God, God would speak to me. And, you know, you know, I would have encounters with God where he would allow me to have a better example. And then... And after that encounter, I knew that Jesus was real. And, you know, I did. You know, and then I would find myself playing church, being the worship leader, being the, you know, the preacher. And, you know, my sister was the only person I had that, you know, basically, you know, participated. You know, there I found, you know, what I was called to do in life. One thing that we as people have to stop doing is stop running to prophetic conferences. I am not a type of person that always want to go to a prophetic conference. I've only been to two prophetic conferences. And one thing that I don't like that takes place in the prophetic conferences, and God forgive me for, for saying this if I'm wrong, but what I don't like that, that takes place in the prophetic conferences a lot of prophecies. But no word attached to it. Basically saying, it's okay, you know, you're telling me, you know, what God wants me to know. But, you know, I've, I, 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 and I'm saying this to say, I've always been, I've only been to two prophetic conferences in my life where a prophet came to the church. And this was a male prophet. He came to the church and he basically came and he just, you know, prophesied to people. I didn't get prophesied to, but it really didn't matter to me because, you know, I feel as though if you if your relationship with God is strong than anything, you shouldn't have to look to man to prophesy to you. You should look to God because what God says is more important than what man has to say because man will tell you anything just to put just for you to put money in his uh, his his hand uh, or or you think you put it in his ministry, but it's actually going in his pocket. But, you know. I'm not big on going to prophetic conferences. I'm not. Um, I'd rather go to a prophetic conference where, yeah, you come, you prophesy because you're a prophet. That's what prophets, prophets come to do. They don't just, they, I mean, they, you know, they come to prophesy, you know, to bring correction and, you know, basically what, what a prophet does. We all know what they do. But I like when a prophet comes, you know, do his prophecies, but also come and preach the word of God. What is God saying to you for us, the church, the people of God? And that's what I want. And I have certain prophets that I listen to because in this day and time, I don't just listen to anyone. I don't like prophets that's always prophesying something to you to make it seem good, but when it really not. Basically saying prophets that... Prophesy about houses and cars and land and, and, and businesses. I don't like that. Because half of the time, they're not telling the truth. They're just saying it just to say that. To put a smile on your face. You have to discern when a prophet is telling the truth. And when it's God and when it's not God. But one of my, one of, one of my favorite prophets is Prophet Todd Hall. You know, I see him as a real prophet. I do. He's, I don't believe he's a phony I don't believe he is a fake. I believe that Prophet Todd Hall is the real deal. I do. Because he comes, he prophesies, 
He gives a word from, uh, he gives a, a, a message, a sermon, and then, you know, he goes to sit down. So I believe that Prophet Todd Hall is a true prophet. Not saying that the other prophets out there are not. But he's just my example of what a, to me, what a, a real prophet should be. But back to my story, you know, but yeah, growing up, I began to have encounters with God. There I found out that from my old spiritual dad, who was a prophet himself, he told me I had a prophetic anointing on my life. I was confused as to what he was, you know, saying. But then I, you know, basically, you know, as, day, as the years passed, I kind of understood it. So basically, you know, I remember um, God gave me two visions. And they were about the day of judgment. Um, and, you know, it's not really nothing long, but I do remember in the dream about, you know, basically what the, because the book of Revelation is basically is what we're living. But um, I remember in the dream, you know, I was on the ground and, you know, the world was basically, it was like a mighty earthquake had happened and there were demons and devils, you know, running rampage across the land. And then in another vision, I was shown down, looking down. There was, of course, a line of people going to heaven, a lot of peanut, a lot, a line of people going to hell. The whole world was destroyed. I was in the sky, in the clouds with Jesus. Um, you know, one of my prayers is that, you know, that when it's all said and done, that I am in heaven, that I am received by God, and that he, you know, he is, you know, he has a smile on his face, you know. Some days I get worried, you know, because, you know, I, I have challenges of my own. There's a lot of stuff that I do that is not pleasing, but I'm working on it. I'm trying to get myself better. My, my ultimate goal at the end of the day, because at the end of the day, I don't have to really tell people what's going on with me because we all fall short of the glory of God. But my ultimate my ultimate prayer, not wish, but prayer, is that when it's all said and done, I have did what God told me to do. I've lived holy and righteous. And I want to hear God say those words, well done, thy good and faithful servant. You may enter into the kingdom and into the joy of the Lord. That's what my prayer is. And even through, even though I'm going through a lot, making a lot of this, a, a bad decision, which uh, which life is about making bad decisions, because if we didn't, then how would we learn? But I tend to still make it, you know, as to you know, well, God it doesn't matter how much, how much I do wrong, I'm still going to repent, ask for deliverance, and trust in you, and I'm going to continue to do this. Until you really get me to where you want to go. But I'm basically saying, and just, and, and just to end that, you know, that, 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 that spiritual dream that God gave me about the day of judgment. We all have time. It may be limited, but we still have time. And, you know, if you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today, please do. Don't wait till tomorrow because... Tomorrow's not promise. You know, every day while I'm in prayer, I, I tell God, you know, God, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I don't wait until tomorrow to tell I tell him right then and there, even if, even if I mess up, I still do it because God will still receive me. And, and my prayer is that whenever I come to God, that I'm, I have a pure heart when I'm saying what I'm saying. Because I don't want to sit here and say something, but I don't really have a pure heart. Because God knows if our heart is pure or if our, God is, uh, or, or if our heart is phony. Basically saying. So like I said, you know, you still have time. Live over your life. Stop worrying about what others are doing. Stop, you know, just stop doing the heartless things that you're doing because you, because, listen, like I said, we're already living in the last days. And we got to make sure that we're 100%ly right with God. Not 20%, not 95 but 100%ly right with God. But it's not too late. You can make that decision today and say, you know, God, I'm ready to serve you. I'm ready to live for you. Pray the sinner's prayer of your life, you know. 
pray deliverance prayers, recite them back to God. That's what God loves for us to do. I just pray that you all, you know, like I said, I love to have fun on my YouTube videos, but, you know, I try to make sure that I take God and what his will is for my life seriously. Even if I mess up, I get back up and I continue to push because I know that God is going to bless me and I'm going to eventually get tired, you know, and want to start doing really, really right. But um, that's basically all I have to say to this video because I kept t thinking about doing it. So I decided to just go ahead and do it. But um, I pray that this video blessed you all. You know, I pray that, you know, you all are blessed by this video, you know. I pray that God get the glory out of this video. Like I said, y'all please like, share, and subscribe because I need more followers on this page. You know, since it is, you know, national, you know, y'all know, pray for this nation. I'm just going to say it like that. Um, let's pray. Let's pray. If you are a sinner, which we all are, pray because God wants to hear your voice. The thing with, you know, the thing with, you know, us as sinners, you know, when we messed up so many times, when we continue to mess up, but when we, when we, when we made a, a whole day all about sin after we just got doing what we did, we think that God doesn't want to hear my voice. He does. God loves you. He doesn't, God does not like the sin that you're doing, but God still loves you. He does. And God is waiting patiently for you to come to him because the, the, the process of deliverance is, is, is right there waiting for you to grab it, but you don't see it because you think that God is not going to do it because you keep doing what you're doing. But no, it's right there waiting for you. God is waiting for you. Don't let the enemy deceive you and, and, and tell you that God doesn't have a plan for your life. Yes, he does. Don't let the enemy deceive you. Pray, talk to God, see God's face. Tell God what you want, what you need, what you need help with, what you need guidance with, what you need God to show you. Pray for revelation. God, yes, I know I'm doing this and that, but God, what is what, what do you have to offer? And, and, and he, I mean, he has to offer, you know, his grace and mercy, eternal life in heaven, doing what he's calling you to do. But God, what do you what, what, what do you want me to do, God? God, ask God, why am I going through what I'm going through? Who, who life am I supposed to touch with this testimony? But like I said, God is waiting on you. This is why this pandemic is here. Yes, when the pandemic made a landfall in the heart of the United States of America, yes, it killed so many people. But out of this pandemic... People was blessed. People started their own businesses. I, uh, some good things came out of this pandemic. And it did. And in this pandemic, you know, God is trying to get our attention. But do you see him getting your attention? The enemy deceives lots of people. And he does. He deceives a lot. He, he deceives a lot of people. To make them think that he that there's a special place for them down where he's at. But then when you get down there, it's a whole nother story. But like I said, let's not worry about what everybody else is doing. Pray for them. But stop worrying about everybody's doing. Let God expose. We can't expose people in, in our life that's not good. I don't really believe, I don't really think that exposing people is the okay thing to do anyways. I think we should just, you know, place them in the hand of God and work on ourselves. But that's basically all I have to say. I hope you all have a great day. Um, and... Like I said, can't wait to celebrate our um, one-year anniversary. Getting ready to walk into another year. And then, and then around this time of the year will be our two-year anniversary. So I cannot wait to 
celebrate with, with you all. You all have a great and wonderful day. And also, like and subscribe to my YouTube channel also. Bye-bye, Team Day Day. Be the fam, that's what they call me. I promise that you never be lonely.